Mm -mm. Very foamy. Very. What is up, everybody? How are you doing today? Happy Friday, August 14th. My name is Michael. This is John. Welcome to the Fantasy Tap, baby. We're drinking foamy beer. We're drinking some really foamy beer, and it hasn't even been shaked. I mean, I did slam them on the table when I put them down, but we're not going to worry about that one today. It's kind of fluffy. Is it? I haven't even taken my sip. It's good. I actually like this a lot. Oh, wow. Yeah, it, it it's really foamy, so it like coats the entire mouth and like really mm -hmm. goes out there. But happy Friday, everyone. Yes, sir. Uh, you know what makes it this Friday even better? Um, it's Looking forward and seeing this helmet sitting here. Oh, yeah. It is so nice to look at. It I, is. I, Don't get your fingerprints on it. We're going to wipe it off. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, like you said, that helmet is beautiful. And every day, I mean, it's going to be hard to let it go. When, when at the end of the season, when there's a winner in the listener league and we've got to pack this baby up and ship it on out, it's going to hurt. It is. It's going to be a pretty sad day. Yep. Maybe a little funeral or procession. That we can have for it on the we'll, way out. We'll have a beer together. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so there's one spot left. One spot left in the Listener League. That's it as of right now. As of recording on Thursday at 6.54 p.m., there is one spot left. So DM us. One person. That's it. It's. I mean, you got a 1 in 11 chance. We don't say no either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we have yet to say no. So, Which is, you know, reach out if, just take your shot. If you don't make it, you don't make it. Oh, well, it doesn't cost you anything if you do. Yep. And if we get enough, you know, maybe we can, th if we get enough people to comment in, maybe we can make a little fun league. Um, Maybe have a little prize, small prize, but maybe yeah, a little Yeah, we could do, you know, maybe like a, a jersey or something. Maybe like a call in on the show. Give us your fantasy advice. Okay. Yeah. We'll nice. talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but anyways, let's get to this fluffy beer. And that is the Monk in the Trunk uh, Organic Amber Ale. It's by Inlet Brewing Company out of Jupiter, Florida. My hometown. Yes, sir. So um, I've never been down there. Have you, being from Jupiter, have you been down? No. Uh, actually, we pulled this one out and we were looking at it. And I was like, oh, Jupiter, Florida, because it has the lighthouse on it. But uh, no, there's only really two brewing companies in that area that i know of and i haven't been to either of them because i moved away from there before i was legally able to drink and we didn't do that before then <laughs> so yeah anyways we're gonna we're gonna have to take a trip down there then if there's a couple couple breweries down there we'll have to stop by inlet and then we'll have to stop by whatever quest brewing company there you go we can stop by tomorrow and see if they're open are you going down there of course oh well that's good so pick up some beer. Um, but yeah, anyways, let's get into our show overview real quick. We've got a pretty uh, pretty packed show for you. And we're doing um, just one one big long segment today, and that's that's bounce backs. Who who was either injured or suspended or just didn't have the best year last year. Who did you draft that ruined your team for you that uh -huh. you have the most hateful anger for? this season and we'll never trust them again. Yeah. Because well, I don't know. I mean, well, yeah. you know, there's some people, there's out a couple there. on there. You get, you lose that player week one, week two, and you'll never look at them the same way again. Or some one that didn't even come out. Yeah. So, um, and then we got a bunch of news for you as well. Some, some bags, some, some dump trucks, some, uh, what are those? Um, those, those Brinks trucks, Brinks trucks, baby. Yeah, I'm. Backing I'm gonna up to the tight end room. I am gonna. I'm starting to learn the tight end position. I I I tried playing it in, in a high school. How'd it go? I rode that bench hard. <laughs> can't can't beat that. So, um, but yeah. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. Let's get into our bounce back of 2020. John, you want to get you want to get started? This guy didn't even play a single game. And he did hurt some people uh, last year. People weren't very, very pleased. It was, is he going to play? Is he not going to play? All he didn't play. year long. Yeah. Just enough for you not to want to either be able to trade him. No one's going to want him from you. You don't want to drop him because you're hopeful that he comes back. And this person's actually going to be A.J. Green. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Getting that new quarterback with Joe Burrow there. Last Right now he's going the standard league. Uh ADP of 57, wide receiver 23. You know what's crazy? I'm sorry to cut you off. Oh, okay. What's you know up? what? Sorry. I apologize. You know what's crazy? 
A- last year, A.J. Green went as the wide receiver 25, ADP 61.4 in standard leagues. Crazy. That I mean, like, so that's how... that I mean, people were... I mean, that's pretty high on somebody who's hurt. Then he didn't well, play all year. Well, last season... Well, even last season, he came off of an injury... A high injury season where he missed half the season. So, last season, people already had that... That, hey, this is an injury injury risk. Well, well, and no, a lot of people were right. But th- that's what I'm saying. He was, I mean, I'm what I'm what I'm trying to convey is that he was drafted pretty high for somebody who we didn't know was gonna play or not. People were, a lot of people were drafting him for that upside at wide receiver twenty five when he wasn't even healthy. So that's where he hurt a lot of hurt a lot of people. Um but anyway, sorry for sorry for cutting you off. You can continue. <laughs> yeah, so getting back to the main point of the show here. So we were talking about AJ Green and he was going in a standard league ADP 57, wide receiver 23, mm-hmm. and in a PPR at ADP of 61, wide receiver 26. Uh, you know, in 2017, he did get 29% of the target share in in uh, Cincinnati with 2018 still getting 23.5%. So he's someone who's going to be getting the ball. We saw Joe Burrow go out there this season. He's going to be lighting up the field. You think? I, I'm thinking he's going to be throwing the ball a decent amount, especially for a rookie quarterback. I don't think he's going to be as beautiful as Joe Burrow has been in college, but I think he's got a lot of receiver help. Uh, but AJ Green, someone you do not want to forget about. He is coming, you know, someone who's <clears throat> he's done it before. He's he's done it. He's done it before. He's done it. He's shown himself. He's finished as a ten, an eight, a four, and a three. Uh, only having a, a hand, two bad seasons back in 2018 and 2016. Both of them were he didn't play any concerns. games, uh, or, or he didn't play a full slate. Yeah, 2018 he played nine games, and 2016 he played ten. Uh, with 2016 finishing wide receiver 34, and 2018 finishing wide receiver 44. Other than that, you've got a top ten receiver almost every year. And what's crazy about that 2018 season? If you look at his uh, totals and what he was on pace for, he was on pace for 11 touchdowns. Uh, 1,234 yards and 82 receptions. So, I mean, he was still playing at a very high level in 2018. Just the injuries really, really hurt him um, that year. And, I mean, if you look also at his, I mean, at his games in 2018, he had one in those for those eight games that he played uh, under eight points. So he's given that he was given that consistency, and you know, especially that year, it kind of hurt a lot of fantasy players. Um, but he, he's, I think he's going to be relevant enough, and as long as he can stay healthy, I mean, he has that wide receiver one upside. It's absolutely, especially walking in or being a part of an offense where you have a new quarterback walking in. He's shown that he can be a touchdown, like an insane touchdown threat. Mm-hmm. He's put up eleven touchdowns twice, ten touchdowns once. Uh, even back in 2017 was the last time he played a full 16 game season. He had eight touchdowns, so he's a huge body. He's six foot four, 210 pounds. He's shown that he can get up there, grab the ball, and come down with it. And I think that's someone who, as a rookie quarterback, and as a, even the coach for the rookie quarterback, you're going to ask him, "Look for this guy. He's going to come down with the ball. He's going to make us both look good." Yeah, and his red zone target uh, target share was 32.6. So. In all of in 2018, so and that was fifth in the league out of you know, yeah. so I mean he's going to get those touchdowns, um, and he's going to get that you know those, those targets those 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 big targets and as long as he can stay healthy and you know he sounds like he is the uh, the Bengals posted a little clip today actually of him in in training camp little hype piece, uh, AJ Green's back on the field catching the balls from Burrow so that's that's great. Uh, again, if he stays healthy, you, you've you got someone who's good, almost a lock for a wide receiver one. Mm-hmm. So are you in a standard league, real quick, just to you know put some perspective on it, A.J. Green or D.J. Moore in a standard league? D.J. Moore. I will take that as well. Um, what about uh, Marquise Brown or A.J. Green? As much as I hate to say it, um, this is kind of it. I would be more comfortable taking AJ Green as my wide receiver one than I would be taking Marquise Brown as my wide receiver one. I'd be more comfortable taking Marquise Brown as my wide receiver two than I would be taking AJ Green as my wide receiver two. 
And I don't know if that's a weird thought process I have. Marquise gives you that really high upside that you, as long as you have a receiver that's already giving you a floor. Mm -hmm. And 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 if I'm taking that investment in AJ Green, I'm obviously understanding that injury risk comes along with it, and so I want to make sure I have people that still have high upside afterwards. But I'm not drafting him to be the high upside potential for me. Yeah. Uh. So. I I agree with the uh AJ, um AJ Green DJ Moore. I'm gonna take uh DJ Moore. Um. But you know, I I think. I think I agree with you on the fact that if, if it is my wide receiver too, I'll take Marquise just to give me that high upside. Um, but if he, if it's my wide receiver one, if I've drafted, you know, running back heavy, I'll be okay with AJ Green uh, giving me that uh, that saw, that floor. And then one more real quick for you um, in a standard league because uh, they're kind of in a similar situation. Debo Samuel or AJ Green? I would take AJ Green's AJ Green's. I don't want to call it consistency, uh, but consistency when he actually plays and what you get out of him over what you expect from Debo, who's coming off his Liz Frank injury, but also uh, was just a rookie last season. So who knows if that's going to be something he can consistently do or just had a really good rookie showing. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take AJ Green there as well. Um, So, I mean, high upside guy, as long as he can stay healthy. So, um, but anyways, let's jump into our next uh, uh, player, and that's Alvin Kamara. It, you know, when you say, when you say, oh, he's going to be a bounce back, it's like, I mean, he didn't have a, a terrible year last year, you know. Um, last year, he finished as the uh, running back 16 in a standard and 9 in PPR. So, I mean, he's finishing as a running back 1 in, in, in a PPR league. So, I mean, it's not horrible, but, you know, when you draft Alvin Kamara, you're drafting him to be a top four running back, top three running back. Top three. Yeah. and Especially PPR. Yeah, definitely, and, and PPR. I mean, he's finished – his uh, prior finishes in PPR league, uh, his rookie year he finishes a three, and then uh, 2018 he finishes a four. And then in standard in 2017 and 2018, he finished as the running back four um, in, in, in standard. So – but you are drafting him. I mean, he's right now he's going at ADP, uh, what is it, 5.3 in standard, running back five. And then PPR, he's going, he's running back four, PPR, uh, running back, or I'm sorry, PPR ADP 5.5. So, I mean, he's a top five pick, all, all the, you know, no matter how you sliced it. Um, but last year, I mean, he was on pace for 112 receiving targets, uh, just under 200 carries. Um, and, and, he had that he had nagging injuries the entire year and still in a PPR league finished as a wide or as a running back uh one had the it just came out that he had his uh, MCL that was blown up or, or tore so i mean what are your thoughts on alvin well back to that MCL he actually said that he played the second half of that season and this is his himself speaking basically we're running on one leg and at 75% so you've obviously got you can go back and look at his game film look at his stats look at how he's performed and see that hey, that's actually realistic. If you go, his injury was back in week eight, and if you if you look at how it looked turned out, uh, prior to his injury, he was getting you guys twenty three fantasy points, thirty five fantasy points, getting eight, ten, seven receiving targets a game, uh, on top of fifteen to twenty over fifteen carries a game. Uh, but post injury, he comes back. He's not getting more than. 13 carries throughout there, getting four carries in a game. His target share goes way down. His receiving still getting about seven, eight receptions. He became more uh, a receiving back, pure receiving back. But I think it's because the coaching staff knew he's injured. He's not able to run the same way he is, but he's just so talented. We still need to use him. <clears throat> and if he's not going to sit out, we're not going to force him to. So when he's coming into this season, he's talking about how he's fully healthy this year. Uh, you saw a fully health and healthy Alvin Kamara in 2017 finish in a PPR league of three and 2018 finishes the running back four. So you would expect those to almost be his floor if he's fully healthy. And with Drew Brees in the backfield still, he's going to be getting another 100 plus targets this year, uh, getting almost just under 200 carries probably. So if not more, so you'll see him be an absolute stud. And I see him as a top three, top four back undoubtedly more than likely a three definitely and another thing you know people are concerned about is uh 
and, the, and they'll mention it, is Latavius Murray taking goal line touches away and, and you know, in that red zone. So just to give you a little bit a uh, little bit of perspective. Well, he did he did get five he did get five touchdowns last season. R- which is extremely rushing, low for him. Which is low for him, but, but he also only played nine uh he also only played his 14 games and he was playing injured throughout the season. Right, but what I'm what I'm trying to say is people are going to bring that up that Latavius Murray is going to take touches away from on the goal line and stuff like that. But Alvin Kamara played 14 games last year and Latavius Murray played 16 and Alvin still had more Twice as many touches inside the five. He had eight touches, and Lat ha- uh, Lat Murray had uh, four. And inside the twenty, uh, Alvin had a total of twenty-seven uh, rushing attempts, compared to Latavius Murray's uh, twenty-three. But as as well, just, just to go back to that red zone, um, you know, touches. He had last year, which was his lowest of his career, he had 40 uh, total touches, so catches and, and rushes um, or carries inside the twenty. With a 10% touchdown conversion, which was also the lowest of his career. So not only are you going to get that um, uptick in catches and, and receiving work, but you're also going to get an uptick in, in total touchdowns as well. Um, he His uh, rookie year, he had a 24.4% uh, touchdown conversion inside the 20 and uh, with, on 41 uh, touches. And uh, in 2018, he had a 20.8% uh, touchdown conversion rate on 77 touches. So I mean, he he had total six touches or six total. He had six touchdowns last year. I mean that 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 number is going to go up in in and of itself. Yeah, absolutely agreed. So, um, but I think that Alvin's a, a very safe pick. Now I know John and I are actually in a uh, a league, uh, a fantasy podcast league that we were invited to, which is pretty neat, but. We have the fourth pick, and it's oh, a, we can't tell them what if they tune in, huh? We can't talk about this. Eh, what I mean, they tune in. It's fine. It There's is what it is. Me sneaking and spying. It's yeah, fine. we're definitely grabbing uh, Alvin Kamara if he falls to us. He's gonna fall to us, I think. <clears throat> but if Zeke falls to us, are you take you're you're leaning more towards? I'm, I'm Alvin? taking Alvin Kamara over Zeke in a PPR league. Is it a full PPR league? It's a half point PPR, but I'm still taking Alvin Kamara over Zeke. Really? Yeah. See that kind of that's a hard one for me. All right, we'll have to talk it out. Might even have to do it on the podcast. But I, I personally, I think Alvin Kamara's Latavius Murray's work last season came from Alvin Kamara missing a game and Alvin Kamara being injury on the injury listing throughout the second half of the season, getting a lot of more, just getting a lot more carries out of it. Even with Mark Ingram in that backfield, who I would undoubtedly say is much better running back than Latavius Latavius. Murray even with Mark Ingram there you saw him have his best finishes yeah 100% and so the Latavius Murray argument nothing to me yeah and like I said I mean that he's taking those goal line he's not I mean he still has more he still has more goal line carries than so now when you go and look at Dallas's offense you have Ezekiel Elliott running with Tony Pollard as well who personally I would say Tony Pollard's a more more talented running back than Latavius Murray is. And we saw last year that Tony Pollard still got his carries as a really young guy out there. And with Zeke getting older, you would think, and they have that young guy in there who's shown that he can be a a stud. I I personally see Zeke slowly falling down. Not saying he's going to, I don't even think he's going to fall under that 300 carry mark. But I do think that Tony Pollard's going to work himself into being a usable back for at least Dallas, not in a fantasy asset, but for Dallas to where Zeke is going to be able to be used longer so they can keep him for that entire contract they signed him for and not just bell cow him and bell cow him and bell cow him. Uh, and I don't know if that's going to come at the expense of his rushing attempts or his passing attempts. Uh, but I do see Alvin Kamara being someone who the Saints are just going to give the workload to on top of Michael Thomas. Mm-hmm. Interesting. We will definitely have to talk about that. Um, so, anyways, I mean, if if he falls to you at that at that four um, fourth position, or if you're at the third position and you got to make a, a decision, I mean, personally, I think I'm gonna. Uh, I mean, it's difficult. I am really high on Alvin Kamara. I think, I think you're right, John. We're gonna not just to mention they just added CD Lamb to the receiving core. Uh, I I'm not worried about that. I think. I mean, you're not gonna pay. You're not gonna pay a running back. 
the money they did to to take a, a step back. But I think that that just shows how much Alvin Kamara I think is gonna. Well, the the jump, owner doesn't jump. care about his fantasy output. They just need they just need to make sure that Ezekiel Elliott's the the talented back that they have that talent on their team. They paid him to ha- just have that talent on the team when they need him to perform and get him actual yards, not fantasy points. No, but you're gonna you're gonna give him the ball. I mean that that's what you paid him for. But anyways, I'm saying that I think I think Alvin may outperform Zeke. It, it's gonna be a toss up, and I'm really gonna have to dig into the numbers. Um, but I am really high on Alvin Kamara this year. I think he could definitely. His, I mean, his percentage chance. What would you give him percentage chance to finish as the running back or as running back one? I think he has like maybe like a twenty five percent chance. Oh wow, that's pretty high. I mean, really? I mean, I don't know. I. I, th- I think it's more realistic that Christian McCaffrey becomes the running back one right. again this season just due to the workload he's going to be getting, and that's undoubtable. Yeah. Uh, I think if you ask me, what, I think he has a 60% chance of finishing as a two. Mm-hmm. I think Saquon's really the only other guy that's questionable there, and it depends on how that offense performs with Daniel Jones there and how many – it comes down to total targets for any of them. And especially in a PPR league, Alvin Kamara is going to be getting – 100 targets receiving 100 <laughs> percent. he almost got 100 last year on his 12 game or on his 14 games right with injuries so i just think that there's there's no way you could not want to roster him when with zeke you're getting a pure running back who hopefully can break break away one time you're getting a consistent three four yards per carry handful of touchdowns a season yeah so i mean i i like I said, I, I'm going to have to really dig into the numbers. I think that Alvin, um, definitely percentage chance, I would give him like a 12, like a 12 to 15% like finishes as the one. I have Christian McCaffrey probably at about like a 45% chance and then Saquon, Zeke, and, you know, other running backs filling it out. But I definitely think Alvin has a high chance to finish as that running back one, um, which is – why he's on our bounce back list so anyways let's move on uh to our next player and that is adam thielen he is currently adp uh 28.8 in standard uh wide receiver nine ppr he's wide receiver nine uh adp 30.2 um last year he finished as oh my computer's all messed up, um, he finished on ten games as a, a wide receiver, fifty six in standard and and sixty three in PBR, um, which is you know other than his first three years where he really wasn't relevant was is by far his his worst. Um, Twenty eighteen he finished as a wide receiver seven in standard and PPR. Um, they also lost Stephon Diggs in that offense. Um, they did gain Justin Jefferson, um, but. I think that Adam Thielen is just primed to take off and have another, you know, six or seven, top six or seven wide receiver fantasy finish, which, I mean, right now he's going to wide receiver nine, like I said. So Yeah. I mean, you, like you just said, Stefan Diggs left the offense. He was getting 22% of the target share last season, especially for someone who was complaining about not getting the ball enough. Uh, but you do have Kirk Cousins throwing the ball to you, who was rated as one of the most accurate quarterbacks as well. Uh, so when you have Adam Thielen out there, <clears throat> you're looking at someone who has shown that the Vikings rely on this man. I mean, he got 155 targets last uh, back in 2018 and 143 back in 2017. And that's with Stefan Diggs there both seasons. So you would assume that without him there, you can they're going to they're going to be using Justin Jefferson a, a lot. But you're still missing out over 100 targets when right. Diggs left. Uh, you may see you may see Irv Smith getting a handful of those. You may see uh, Olabisi getting a handful of those. But you're you're still going to find that his target share is could probably almost going to be is more than likely higher than it's going to be than it was in 2017. And this may be one of his one season where he gets the most opportunity due to the lack of places for that ball to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they can only run the ball so much and with a run heavy offense that they showed last season i mean cook still got his 260 carries you're looking at Thielen could easily get you know another 160 receptions yeah and with someone who gets uh on an average you know 
eight, nine yards, 10, 10 yards a target. When you're looking at 60, 60, 160 attempts, he could break. He could easily end up as a wide receiver of like five. He could be a, 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 a sleepy Mike Evans type play who someone who's going overlooked, underlooked. No one's really looking at him, but then sneak into that top end wide receiver and consistently put up points week by week and not just make it a, uh, a boomer bust type player. Back in 2018, he was putting up 17, 20 points a game, only having one, two, four or five games where he put under 20 up. Yeah. Another thing is, is last year was the first time he missed a game. He played a full 16 games in every season before that, bar, except for his rookie year, which he didn't, you know, play any because he was undrafted. So, um, I mean, I don't, I, I'm not really concerned about any injuries reoccurring or anything like that. Um, in 2018, I believe he had uh, 15 red zone targets. Uh, let me let me pull this up. Yeah, 15 red zone targets, which which was uh, fourth in the league. He did have nine um, total touchdowns, which was eighth overall, and that was the highest of his career. Um, but with Stephon Diggs gone, I think that's repeatable for him. And like I said, he finishes the wide receiver uh, seven there. And there's there's I mean. There's nobody else that's, that's really going to take away his targets, and when you when you watch Kirk Cousins and uh, and and Adam Thielen on the field, you can tell that Kirk 120 percent trusts Adam Thielen, and Absolutely. I think that's the when you're looking at a quarterback and a wide receiver, that is the biggest thing is trusting somebody, knowing that they're going to be where they're supposed to be at the top of the route or, or anywhere on the field. And when that happens, that's when a that's when a receiver really flourishes in fantasy wise and just overall. Yeah, because if you can if you can trust your guy to be able to catch the ball in the, the ball in the middle of the field, you're going to be able to trust him in the red zone. And when you can throw, when you know you can throw that ball up to him, and on a 50-50 ball, he's catching it sixty percent of the time. There's not much more you can ask for as a quarterback. Uh, and then as far as fantasy assets, as fantasy aspect goes it's all about targets and all about opportunity yep. and he's someone who's going to be getting a lot of it um so i, I he's a super high super high little guy uh, yeah he's not low i i was just gonna say i just looked at his height he's six foot three i didn't realize he was that tall <laughs> oh really you thought he was short I, I mean i thought he was like six foot oh no now, come on nfl receivers unless they're super speedy generally over like that six one six two mark i don't know did you know what? Didn't uh, know that. But and he's not a super fast guy. I mean, four or five. No. Not not too fast. So, but anyways, a little bit faster than me. A smidge. <laughs> I think you run that four five five. He runs that four five four. Four five seven. So, um, anyways, I mean, Adam Thielen is 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 totally a great uh, option there, especially for where he's going. Wide receiver nine's not bad at all. I would totally trust him to be my wide receiver one. I like his durability. You know, like I said, he met last last year was the first time he missed games. And I mean, I've heard a few people say, "Oh, is is he going to be? You know, injury wise, is he going to be back?" And I don't think I think he'll be fine. So, anyways, let's move on to our first quarterback or our only quarterback on this um, on this list, and that is Cam Newton. Superman himself, uh, currently going standard ADP 149, quarterback 20, and a PPR league. Um, I, I got to figure out if if that's six touchdowns or six point touchdowns or not in 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 PPR. Why do you? I don't know because his ADP is a little higher. He's at ADP uh, 116.8. Maybe it's just the way people are drafted. Quarterback 14. Um, either way. Personally, I think he's going to outperform those, especially if he's starter week one. Do you still think that Stidham's going to be that week one starter? And then yeah. You still think that? Okay. I, I still think Stidham's going to be seeing some some play time week one. Maybe not starting the game. I don't know who's going to start the game. But I do think they're going to get Stidham in some work this season. They're not just going to let him fall to the wayside and make him appear backup for the rest of his career. They did just invest some capital in him. Uh, I mean, but who knows? Maybe Brian Hoyer comes out of camp and wins it all. <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, super shocker right there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, Cam Newton is is very very undervalued, and I think he, or not very undervalued, but he is definitely in uh, the running for a bounce back year. Last year, he finishes the fifty first quarterback overall. He only played two games, so that's kind of expected. It's honestly, not that bad. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but before before that, I mean. 
he dropped out of uh, quarterback one rankings twice. Uh, one time in 2018, he finishes the quarterback 13 in a, in a, I'm assuming a six point touchdown league. Um, but, uh, other than that, the, the lowest he's finished was quarterback 17 in standard and, and, um, in, in standard play. So, but he's finished as the quarterback, uh, his rookie year, three, four, three, had the 17 in, uh, 17th spot in, uh. 2014, he finished as a quarterback one in 2015, 17 in 2016, and then two in 2017 and 12 in 2018. So a ton, I mean, his whole career is littered with quarterback one numbers. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at someone who's throughout his career, again, has been averaging over 100 rushing attempts a year, uh, getting you 600 yards, getting, so on average, about 7.25 touchdowns per season rushing. Uh, which is so, so which, you want which is those, great. Uh, I mean, rushing that's, upside. That's, that's one less than Lamar Jackson last season. Uh, I mean, two less than Josh Allen, everyone. But <laughs> so you're getting someone who's giving you that mobility that which is amazing as a fantasy quarterback because you get the points on the on the run and in the air. And he's also on average throwing you up 3,400 yards, which isn't a huge amount, uh, but it's enough. It's enough for as a standard quarterback to almost land you as a quarterback too. Now you add that up, add that rushing upside. And he's someone who should realistically have no reason to finish outside of the top 12. My only concern is he's been obviously jumping in the rankings because it's pretty obvious that he's someone who's going to be useful this season. My only problem is if he continues to jump, at what point is he no longer going to be that super value to me? But as far as coming back from the injury and getting that slap in the face that Carolina gave him, I think he's going to bounce back and be absolutely amazing for the Patriots. And sadly, I get to watch him play twice a year. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> he's got that chip on his shoulder, which is which is great. Um, currently, right now in a standard league, he's going at uh, quarterback twenty. The quarterback twenty one is Philip Rivers. Um, so, who are you taking between Cam and Philip Rivers? I'll take Cam. Okay, here we go. I'll take Cam's upside. Yep, um, <clears throat> Jimmy G or Cam. I don't know, honestly. I'm taking Cam. I'm taking the upside there. Jimmy's Jimmy's I think very. Jim, I think Jimmy's gonna have a consistent, better season than he did last year passing. Which is, I mean, where do you do you remember where he finished last year? Yeah, uh, actually, he, he was surprisingly not that low. Um, no, I think I think he finishes uh, uh, running back, or I'm sorry, quarterback. Uh, let's see, 14. That's off the top of my head. Yeah, he uh, finishes 14. 14. Yeah. So, I would take. I would take. Uh, Cam there. I like his rushing upside. Personally, now, oh, oh, no. oh. I was gonna say it's funny. He, fin- he I mean, you could technically say he finished uh, quarterback thirteen in fan- in standard fantasy scoring because him and Jared Goff did tie. Oh, so you know, th- if we're going on rankings, there it only makes it makes a smidgen of a difference. All right. So, <laughs> anyways, um, what about this? Because I know you're super high on this guy and. And this is going to be an ongoing debate. Um, Drew Locke or Cam Newton? So you're going to ask me if I take someone who has the the best pocket presence in the oh NFL last God. season? I'm just kidding. No, uh, honestly, I take I take Cam Newton. And in that situation, I love Drew Locke. I think he's going to be a baller. Drew Locke, listen, if you're listening, John wants to marry you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think Drew Locke is in a situation where he's going to be a baller, but as highly as I see that opportunity, as highly as I see that being possible, there's a chance that he's not. At least with Cam, I'm getting someone who's proven to be someone that teams can rely on right. year after year after year. And at the end of the season, at the you know by week five, I know I'm not going to be looking for another quarterback with Cam Newton. Drew Locke, I shouldn't be. I, I, you know, I may have the one of the better quarterbacks in, in fantasy value, but I'd rather be comfortable with that quarterback position, especially drafting Cam Newton where he is. Mm-hmm. I will take uh, Cam Newton there as well. I mean, I, for where he's going, I mean, it's a steal. He's definitely going to jump up in ranking. He's If he gets that starting job, if Bill Belichick comes out and says tomorrow, hey, Cam Newton's our number one, He's going to skyrocket in rankings. So if you're drafting now, draft him late. I'd be comfortable with it. I'd be comfortable with drafting him as my only quarterback. Are you drafting him or Matt Stafford? Ooh, that's hard. Um, mm, 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 mm. 
I know how hot you are on Matt. So. Yeah, I think because Matt's actually going one before him in a PPR league. Quarterback thirteen versus quarterback fourteen. Mm, that's hard. You know what? I'm. I think I'm. I'm gonna go. Dun dun dun. Oh man, that's hard. Yeah. I I think I'm gonna take Matt. I think I'm gonna take Matt. I just like the their passing offense. You know, he's he. They're gonna sling the ball around. Um, and he has a new toy in in uh, DeAndre Swift. Throw the ball to as well. So um, I like I like him there. So. Um, but anyways, let's move on to our – oh, I thought it was our final player, but it's not. No. First running back. Surprise. Ba- first running back, Le'Veon Bell, baby. Um, you think he's going to have a bounce back year? Yeah. So, I mean, realistically, it this is one I, – I didn't really want to call it a bounce back because you're looking at someone who finishes in a PPR league last year as running back 16 and in a standard league running back 21. So not terrible. So, so not terrible. But you're also looking at someone who just had the worst season of his career. R- big time. Um, so I don't think that, you know, he's, I don't think Le'Veon Bell is going to finish as a top five running back, Mm-mm. not in any way, shape or form. And I'd give it a 2% chance of being possible. But I do believe that with the addition of Mackay Becton in their offensive line, yep. they spent that draft capital on that. Uh, Adam Gase came out early when, or reports of Adam Gase not being happy with that Le'Veon Bell signing came out early once Le'Veon Bell was there. <coughs> And in the off season, you saw Le'Veon kind of hint at that being the case. And then this year, Gase is talking about how he's really supportive of him being there. The Jets have, didn't go out and sign any huge name wide receivers, didn't trade for any big wide receivers. But they got Frank Gore. <laughs> <laughs> They've got Frank Gore. So the man's... 85. It's still balling. 85 and a half. <laughs> but he's... so. The only thing they really added was a little bit of depth at Frank Gore in the running back room, but that's not someone you're expecting to be able to take away touches from Le'Veon. Yeah, and I think that you're going to see more of Adam Gase and Sam Darnold putting more faith and trust into Le'Veon. Now, he's <clears throat> he's had only one or three finishes outside the top five in his career, mm-hmm. and only one of them came on a more than 12-game season. And then he's just an absolute PPR machine. Last season with the Jets, he got uh, 70, 78 targets, and that wasn't even – that was his first season working with the team. Come After a year coming off, he took that entire season off. They, You know, who knows what they expected out of him. But back with the Steelers, he was getting 100 targets a season as long as he was playing a full one. So you're going to be getting that – again, from the Alvin Kamara standpoint, you're going to be getting that PPR upside – he is yards per carry per season has been was again at the lowest it's ever been by getting 3.22 yards per carry. Uh, do you blame the Jets' offense? Do you blame the game script? I blame the I blame the offensive line and Adam Gase. I think he's and Adam looks, Gase. I think he's but... a terrible coach. <laughs> so I don't I don't see him getting that three three point two two. If you bump that up to three and a half yards a carry, which is absolutely reasonable. I mean, you're looking at someone who's put up four point nine, four point seven, four point eight six uh, before their four point oh two season. But if you can bump that up to three and a half, you're looking at him getting over 850, 875 yards. Yeah, definitely. And, I mean, he only scored four total touchdowns last year, yeah. which was by far the lowest in his career. Um, he had, what, six six uh, touch, or six touches within the five, um, which was the second lowest of his career, and a total of 30 red zone touches, which was the second lowest, again, um, in his career, and and the only one that's lower than that was the year um, 2015. He only played 16 games. So I definitely think we see some touchdown, some positive regression um, in 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 the touchdown field. So I mean, if he gets an you know that eight eight to nine touchdowns, I I, I mean that's going to bump him up into that, that running wide back, receiver one or running, running back, back one. one absolutely easily. So, um, I, I definitely think that, you know, where he's going, running back 18, I mean, and 19, especially 19 in a PPR, I mean, you got to take him where, where he's at. And it, it's kind of a kind of a no-brainer for me. I know it's scary because it is the Jets' offense, and, you know, but even even if they're playing from behind, like you said, he's going to get that uh, that pass-catching work. Um, so, I got, I got one for you real quick, or two for you. Uh, David Johnson or Le'Veon Bell? I'm taking Le'Veon. Me too. Uh, I'm staying completely away from David Johnson this year, to be honest. Leonard but Fournette or Le'Veon? 
That's it. What was my next question. I know it was because we talked about it yesterday, and I don't think I ever gave you my answer. Yeah, I, I, I still haven't decided. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a really good one. Um, wait, didn't did we talk about it in yesterday? I think we did episode? talk about it actually. Yeah, it yeah, was an they're gonna. Run, I think uh, yeah, they I said they were gonna run Leonard Fournette into the ground, which is something I believe in. Yep. But it's you know I'm I'm still on the fence about it. Yeah, I I, I take Leonard uh, Leonard there personally. Um, but what about Melvin Gordon or or Le'Veon? Le'Veon, I don't like Melvin Gordon at all. Same. I, Staying completely. Melvin just has us. such a terrible quarterback. I mean, so. James Conner, Le'Veon <laughs> Bell. Oh, Le'Veon, by a mile. Okay. So, anyways, um, let's get into our final player, and I mean, he was suspended for half of the year last year. I he was solid when he came out. Uh, they got a better coach, and I mean, Kareem Hunt's gonna return give that give you that return on investment right now he's going running back uh 28 in standard uh 65.2 adp um and ppr he's going 85 or uh adp uh, 54 and running back 27 what do you think about kareem well i mean last season like you said he missed eight games coming into a new offense so automatically you're looking at Someone who should shouldn't even when he got there, you wouldn't be expecting his best work. But yet he comes in there and he finishes running back forty eight or forty seven in a PPR league, and that's mainly because they they seem to have worked him as a, as wide receiver just as much as a running back. Mm-hmm. Again, with that PPR upside, he got forty four targets for thirty seven receptions, got his one touchdown in there, still carried the ball forty three times for one hundred and seventy nine yards, and got his two touchdowns there. Now on an eight game finish, that's pretty great. Yeah, I mean you get you give him 80, 83 attempts or eighty six attempts, you double that and give him his two hundred and fifty yards, three hundred yards, but then also double his receiving. If he was on a full a full sixteen game spread like that, he would have finished as a a low end running back or a high end running back too. Yeah, and so this off season they actually had time to get in there with with <clears throat> with a. Uh, the Browns, uh, Browns offense. He was able to be through there through all their meetings. They have had, as we said, have talks with him running, lining up as receiver. He's in the wide receiver meetings, yeah. Yeah, and so we're gonna be seeing someone who's gonna be getting just as much pass catching work. And in that PPR league, you're you're looking at someone who's gonna be bringing you in points week by week. I mean, he had a a number four finish in a PPR league back in 2017, and a number twelve in uh, 2018. Mm-hmm. He used to be a a standard league monster. Yeah, I mean, he he'd still be competing. He'd be a top three to four pick if he was still with the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, maybe even like the one. He'd Absolutely. be competing with CMC. If 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 the Browns didn't have such a great running back and Nick Chubb, he'd still be yeah possibly a top, one. Yeah, cl- cl- close to it. Um, I mean, even last year, he's he's a serviceable flex option. Um, last year he came out and scored you know more than ten points. Uh, what is that? Five times. In, in his in eight games, so and that's on a brand new offense, what which was not firing on all cylinders whatsoever. Um, Terrible coaching, yeah, almost and, as bad as Gase's. And he, well, I mean, yeah, well, definitely right up there. He's they fired a, him for a reason. He's the tight ends coach now over at uh, in the Giants. We'll actually be talking about him and Evan Ingram a little bit later. But anyways, um, he also put up you know an eight point eight uh, fantasy finish. The others were five and six points, but. 8.8 points, I mean, I'm not going to be, t- you know, too upset if that's what my flex player does. So, I mean, I definitely think that he's going to get that pass-catching work. And the thing is, is, God forbid, if something does happen to Nick Chubb, um, even if he misses a couple games, you know, nothing serious, but even if he misses a couple games, Kareem Hunt's going to take that over and he's going to give you some weak winning games. I love him here. I mean... I, I can't say enough, you know. I mean, running back twenty eight and, and twenty seven in PPR, he he's gonna he's gonna clear that. I would book him as a, a two, uh, mid uh, mid to high end two. Yeah, mid yeah, mid ab- two, absolutely mid two. Uh, I and I think with the with them adding, with them having him coming back mid season last year, they weren't gonna be. They didn't give him that equal workload that they were expecting to give him. They didn't put him in week nine. Like, here you go. Welcome to the offense. This is how we're going to use you for the rest of this rest of your career here. So I think that they're going to find use two ways ways to use him. He's got so much talent, and you really saw that in Kansas City. Yep. 
So there's a reason they picked him up after everything that's happened to him. And and I think that hopefully the coaching staff understands and gets him out there. And, again, it's going to all be about opportunity for him. 100%. Um, just to give you some perspective, uh, he's going, like I said, running back 27 in a PPR. Running back 28 is DeAndre Swift. I'm taking Kareem all day over DeAndre. Um, Raheem Moster is going as the running back 20. Or I'm sorry. Did I say DeAndre Swift is running back 28. Kareem's 27. Raheem Moster is 26. That's a difficult one for me. I mean, I think I'm going to take Raheem there just because I think he's going to be that team's one. But it's going to be difficult for me because we, it's all hearsay as of right now. I mean, Tevin Coleman could come out and be the, the one there, and, and that could really hurt Raheem. Who would, so back to how, how we were talking about the A.J. Green uh, ranking him with Marquise Brown. Would you be, Do you have any different feelings having either one of them as your one and, or having them as your two? Would that change your... I think it's kind of similar. If Raheem, if I'm going as a heavy wide receiver, uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Raheem to be my number one running back. Mm -hmm. But if Kareem is there and I already have a number one uh, uh, running back, then I'll grab Raheem, uh, Kareem over Raheem. Just because, you know, Kareem's going to give you those weak winning weeks. And, I mean, the, the sky's the limit for him. So... But anyway, oh. huge, huge, huge upside. Yeah, just saying. Cool. I, and you never know. Do you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's the reason I brought it up. I was because I was kind of thinking the same thing. If if I take Raheem as my number one, but I take Kareem's huge upside as my number two, mm -hmm. I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't want to have to rely on that weekend, 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 weekend as my starting running. Yeah, back. you don't want to be getting ten. You know, having those ten eight point weeks for not your as not not point. on the not in, when you have your roster not next to that little RB button. If it's next to those little flex slots. Yeah. It's fine. It's okay. It's manageable. But that RB, you want 20 points plus. Yeah. Which, I mean, I don't know if Raheem's going to give you those consistently, but more consistent numbers than, or a more consistent floor than Kareem. Yeah. So, anyways, that was it. That was our bounce backs. Um, I've, well, I'm excited for next week. Yeah. Uh, Got our rankings, baby. Yeah. Our rankings are coming out. We're going to start with running backs. We're going to try to get through our top 24, if possible, within two episodes. Um, it's going to be it's going to be all rankings. and, and You guys are really going to see who's going to win your leagues. We yep. finally got the numbers together. Just got to put them all in order <clears throat> and, and see. That's it. Yeah. You'll, you'll, you'll see. Who, we'll, and we will see who those big-time steals are in the draft. People, that, like John said, people that are going to win your league. Um and you're leaving to find out that me and Mike are completely different on a handful of players. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to them, I'm sure we're going to have to talk about the differences. And so you'll be able to get the different, you'll figure out where each one's mindset's coming from. Yep. Look at the facts that we have and the, the history that we're following and see whose advice you want to follow in that player. Yeah. Uh, yeah. hundred percent. We'll give you the facts that we see and then you can make that decision on those players. Um, I, I, I would I would say take my advice, but I I can't I can't make you. So, anyways, let's get into the news from around the NFL. And like we said, holy crap, a lot of money spending today. Man, Ooh. I shouldn't have rode that bench so hard. Maybe I could have made a, a nice little paycheck for myself. Seriously, even a practice squad would have been nice. <laughs> I'd be happy. <laughs> Five years, seventy five million dollars, eighteen million dollars signing bonus. Forty million total with injury guarantees and thirty million guaranteed at the time of signing. So George Kittle, pick me like pick me up in the Lambo, bro. Let's go. Where are we going? Anywhere he wants, man. I mean, Ian Rappaport came out and, and said on Twitter that you know broke the broke the news. Five years, seventy five mil. That's oh boy. That that's awesome for them. I mean, he's a young guy that's only been in the league for a few years now. <clears throat> and with Jimmy G coming in and being more being coming into this season and him and Jimmy G having such a great relationship together, your fantasy value in him is going to be consistent for years to come. What you're going to be expecting from, from the team. If you're just a 49ers fan, congratulations. You guys have one of the best tight ends in football for the next five years. Yeah. So I, I think that the, you know, he's a great blocker. They already have a great offensive line. They've got great running backs. It's, it's such a great thing for, San Francisco to continue to be able to rely on him and know that they have him 
sitting there able to be used. Uh, so I just wish it could be me. Currently, he's going as a tight end one in Dynasty Leagues, uh, ADP 23. I'm not – I wouldn't be upset taking him there. I mean, a couple other plays going around, Juju Smith-Schuster in a Dynasty League, Miles Sanders, uh, Leonard Fournette, Cortland Sutton, um, right around those those two up and two down um, spots. So I'd take him over all those. And especially in a dynasty league. Yeah. Miles Sanders is the only one I'd kind of hesitate with, but I mean, depending on who I who I pick, you know, you have a tight end there for years to come. So um he's getting the bag and Travis Kelsey's getting the bag. Ian Rappaport broke on Twitter that they uh the Chiefs um extended <laughs> Travis Kelsey four years, fifty seven mil. Boy. What would you do with $57 million? $57 million, uh, McDoubles? Damn. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, realistically. Kind of sounds good, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm hungry. Uh, <laughs> get some food after this. Yeah. Uh, no, honestly, the most interesting part about this to me is <clears throat> I didn't know Travis Kelsey was coming up in the next couple of years for, for his contract, but I didn't think they would be working on an extension for him, being that he is getting to that 30 years old mark, and they just paid Patrick Mahomes. They just paid Frank Clark. Um, they only entered this off season with one hundred and fifty five dollars in cap space. I mean, you can really thank Sammy Watkins for restructuring his deal and really wanting to stay stay as a chief. But I think it's just awesome to keep seeing these these two teams, two Super Bowl teams, <laughs> uh, sign sign their tight ends to these yeah. jaw dropping contracts, and both of them definitely deserve it. Travis Kelsey's an absolute baller. Football wise, fantasy wise, he finishes in the in a one or a two the past couple of years. So I think it's something you're going to be able to continue to rely on and Definitely. dynasty value. You've got him for at least three out of those four years. Yeah, and they just ex- they extended him. So I mean, he already had two years on his contract. So yeah. Um, but yeah, man, whoo, fifty seven mil. Um, but anyways, let's get into the next another tight. We got four tight ends in a row. I didn't even realize that. Um, Will Disley, uh. It, it practiced for the first time yesterday, 10 months after tearing his uh, Achilles. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but Bob Condotta. Um, he is a, I think that's how you say his last name, but he is a Seahawks uh, beat writer. It, um, he posted a, a video of Will Disley uh, on the practice field, which is great for him. You know, I hope he stays healthy. He's had, you know, some really, some big time injuries um, over the past couple years, especially for a really talented guy. Somebody, like I was saying earlier with Adam Thielen um, and, and Kirk Cousins having that, that connection, when Will Disley's on the field, I feel like you see that with with Russell. Him, with Russell. He, he, he trusts him. So, I mean, when he's on the field, he's a monster. I have him in a couple dynasty leagues. And, you know, when he plays, I love it. Yeah, that's the issue, though, is, I yeah. mean, we're talking about him being healthy, but this guy's played 10 games in his entire career. Yeah. And they've been good games, though. They've, they've been gr- I mean, they've, they've been great. He's got two games back in 20, 2018 where he scored less than two, uh, 10 fantasy points and only one game in 2019, minus the day, the week he got hurt, where he scored sub-10. Uh, other than that, you're looking at the 15-20s for him. Which so is great when, for When he end. plays, he's great. Yeah. But drafting him and picking up and holding him, it's... In a redraft, I'm going to Especially in a redraft, I, I would stay away. You're looking at someone who's going to be... Hopefully, going. Go, I mean, if he could get eight games out of him, you're looking at someone if, like Evan Ingram's situation where he only can get half a half a season out of him. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, uh, if you have him in dynasty leagues, just keep him there on your on your roster. You know, especially if it's a really deep dynasty league, he he could pay dividends. You know, we we've seen you know a few players come back who uh, could or who have had, you know, some pretty big injuries at the beginning of their career and then, you know, been been healthy. Otherwise, John, you're making a face over there. What's up? Well, I was just looking at the ADPs. He's going in, uh, in a standard league ADP of uh, <coughs> 158, makes him wide receiver 19. You mean tight end 19? Tight end 19, yeah, sorry. Uh, but then you have to go over to PPR. Um, let's keep scrolling down here. He's actually going as the tight end 50. Ooh, just keep an eye on him. I mean, just keep an eye on him. I mean, pick him up if you've got that open roster spot. Pick him up, throw him on the team yeah. if he's there. If he's on the waivers, he doesn't get drafted. If he's if he plays, he's good. Yeah. If he doesn't play, it's time to drop him. 
Yeah, that's true. Take him with your last pick. So could could pay dividends. Um, another another thing we'll get into real quick. Uh, Freddie Kitchens, the Giants' tight end coach, uh, said that uh, Evan Ingram did a quote unquote hell of a job uh, rehabbing during the summer. He's still not a hundred percent. Um, but he's working towards it after uh, that Liz Frank injury. Uh, Kim Jones broke that on Twitter. Evan Ingram, very talented guy. He just has to stay healthy. Another guy that need, you know needs to. He just had some bad luck, so could give you that fantasy output. Um, you want to get into our last couple pieces of news before we uh, get into that beer of the day? Yeah. So uh, next we've got Todd Gurley. He's been walking around Falcons training camp uh, with a limp, according to Va McClure. From ESPN. Vaughn McClure. Vaughn McClure. Yeah, sure. I forgot the end. My bad. Oh, Vaughn. thanks. <laughs> uh, but so the Falcons have already talked about considering limiting his workload at camp as of August 12th. But then today we obviously had the reports of him limping while walking but not running. Uh, so we saw the Rams talk about limiting his snap counts last season. And you kind of saw it, but it wasn't nearly what everyone expected. Like everyone was expecting him to get about just 100 carries last season and maybe just a touch over because we were, everyone was afraid of their workload that they were going to give him. Uh, obviously not thinking that this 100 year. 100 carries? Todd Gurley, a little over 100 carries last season prior to the prior to the season starting. I don't remember that, but, I mean, I'm not, I don't have a good memory. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean. Anyways. Okay, yeah, so you're looking at someone who's, does have some injury concern, and but you really haven't seen that injury hit him too hard, right? Uh, it's it's so far it's been talk and maybe a little bit here and there. I still think you've got an incredible value out of the guy. Yeah, um, he's starting to creep his way up the the ADP boards and that running back spot, but hopefully this will knock him down a little bit. Even with these reports, I'm still grabbing him when I see him. Yeah, I mean standard last year he finished as a uh, you know running. 12, he, he finishes running back 12, so a low end one. PPR, he finished as the running back 14, um, so high end two. Uh, and currently, where is he? Do you, do you have his current, um, uh, I'm sorry, his current ADP in in uh, standard is 24. Um, ADP over uh, 44.4 overall. So, I mean, I, I think he's definitely going to get that uh, get that work there. He's going to be running back 16 in a PPR league. ADP of 26. And I definitely think that that's, you know, he'll finish there or better. So I think he's a pretty good value. So, uh, but anyways, let's get into our last piece of news, and that is Lamar Miller officially signed with the Patriots today. Um, he was placed on the active pup list, so he can be activated at any point. Um, you just got to keep an eye on on what's going to happen there because Sony Michelle is also on the pup list. So, just keep an eye, keep an eye on that that running back situation. Um, I mean, I'm not really gonna. I'm starting to like James uh, James White a little bit, um, just a smidge, kind of a little uptick for me. But um, that backfield kind of scares me. That whole offense, you know, other than Cam, I think scares me. So, but anyways, John, you got anything else to add? Uh, no, just uh, no news for me. No. All right. Well, let's. Let's get into our beer of the day. All right. So, like we said at the beginning, um, we are drinking on the monk in the trunk. Got a little bunk in the trunk, baby. Um, it is from Inlet Brewing Company uh, out of Jupiter, Florida. Really good beer. I, I really enjoyed it. I finished it within the first 30 minutes, and I wish I had more. It gives you that light, fluffy feel, and when you take a take a sniff of it, you get that like I get citrus honey. Is that what do you get when you? I, I I've got a really nice little strong like strong wheat flavor. Um, it is an, it is an amber ale, uh, but smell profile I'm looking at a little bit of little bit of citrus and sweetness, Something. but but I do get an overwhelming like wheat flavor. Flavor. Like a wheat smell or like an, oh, the aroma of just it's, yeah, it's definitely there. You can definitely and, smell that, and it kind of comes through on the taste as well. You do have a nice little strong wheat. Uh, surprised it's not labeled uh, like 
a Belgian wheat, but obviously it's an amber ale. It it does have. Um, it, I was reading. Does it? Yeah, it's got Belgian al- Belgian Abbey yeast mixed into it, uh, and it which gives it a subtle, a subtle nutty and malty sweet flavor. Uh, and so, I mean, really great beer. Good on you, Jupiter. Proud of you guys. Clap what clap. <laughs> it's. <laughs> I mean, it's a yeah. It's. The can art, getting the can art real quick, it's pretty dope. It's got a monk holding up a chalice with some beer in it. I'm assuming it's the monk in the trunk because he he's also standing in a little trunk. So I was looking for his butt. <laughs> he's got a gut. He's got a gut, but no butt. Um, anyways, he's in, it looks like he's in like a, a field. field of wheat. and But in the background, that's the Jupiter Lighthouse, John. Did Is you it? know that? I did not. I looked it up. It's the Jupiter Lighthouse. Oh, look at you? it. Look at look at it. It's on the screen right now. <laughs> I mean, does that? that yes, no. It absolutely is. I just I, it's I, red with the little. I guess I guess it's me right? being a native or being from there. I'm just like you. Really had to look that up to confirm that. Yeah, I mean, make, making sure. I mean, it's kind of weird to have a lighthouse in the middle of a wheat field. Um, it's the only thing Jupiter's got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've I guess got a lighthouse. So. I guess so. And this is uh, the Monk in the Trunk is their flagship beer. Um, you can go to their website inletbrewing.com. Uh, they don't have you know too much uh, info on it right now. I, I don't know. I, I don't know why. Um, but you know this is their flagship beer. They do have a beer finder on there, so you can check it out. We got I got this at Fresh Market. Uh, I know they're all over like Publix and things like that in Florida. Uh, not a hundred percent sure, you know, where they're distributed outside of that. Um, but they, um, their their brewing mantra is that they believe that beer should be complex, but brewed with simple, wholesome ingredients. Um, and the monk in the trunk is brewed using all organic ingredients. And that, like I said, is their flagship beer. Um, John, you want to get into the, uh, the little little facts about it? Yeah. So this is actually going to be a five point five ABV. Uh, they do not have an IBU listing that we were able to locate. Uh, so if you guys want to put that on your boxes or cans, it would be helpful. Or if you know it, DM us. We'll we'll, we'll yeah. uh, post it online or on our Instagram, Twitter. Absolutely. And like we said, it was multi- it's actually brewed with Belgian Abbey yeast uh, and a lot of two-row wheat. Uh, it has some caramelly flavors, definitely very sweet as we've spoken about. Uh, mixes in nicely. Uh, as far as the flavor profile go, as soon as you take that sip, and I think we mentioned it at the beginning of the show, like it it foams up in your mouth. Yep. Not to the points where you're spitting it up or like no. choking on it, but just covers your mouth and lets you get that flavor everywhere around. Uh, it leaves a nice little lasting uh, wet wetness on your tongue, so yeah, you're not getting not a dry, dry feeling. Beer. You're not feeling like your mouth's getting a little bit of dry mouth. Uh, so it's actually a really nice little calm drink, little chill beer that I would recommend to a lot of people. Um, big uh, what what would you, you give it? You know, I actually I really like this. I like this a lot. I'm gonna it, and this is a high score. I mean, and it's a pretty high pretty high score compared to what I've been giving out lately. You going to the nines? No, no, no. That'd be difficult to get up there. Um, but I'm I'm gonna give it. I think like eight point two. Okay. Yeah. What do you What are you shooting at? What's your uh, uh? So I liked it. Like I said, it was a it was a nice easily drinkable but it didn't have anything that i'm like super into personally as far as my flavors something i could recommend uh but it's so it's like a lower seven it's probably like a seven two seven three for me run that average average point yeah say. It's, it's it's a good beer I, I could drink it if it's handed to me i'm not grabbing a different can if it's there but it, i'm not grabbing it for myself to drink i would grab a six pack of it to go share with some friends though i'm yeah uh, to be honest Whenever I see it, I might start picking it up because it, it's to me. I really like that that flavor it's given off. So yeah. it's a good beer overall. I think we agree on that. And yeah, and you know well, what else is really good? Drew Lock is not good. No, <laughs> he's amazing. You're right. But what's actually really good is you could be winning that last fa- that last spot in our fantasy our fantasy listener league. Yes, you could. And you need to be quick to do that. Actually, got- no. They could be winning this. It's free to sign up. Well, there's only one spot left. Just DM us, they and they got, got it. Quick. DM us, and they got it. Yeah. <laughs> if you're quick, and you actually know what you're doing, and you listen to us, you guys could easily win this little Tyree Kills autographed helmet that we have sitting here. Easy money. 
Easy, easy. So if you guys want to reach out to us for uh, your hopefully get that last spot in our listener league, Mm -hmm. send us your beer advice or any beers you guys would like us to recommend or review for you. Uh Fantasy football advice and anything about mock drafts, trade requests, anything like that. Send it over to us at the fantasy tap on Instagram and Twitter Mm -hmm. or send it to our email, the fantasy tap at gmail.com. And then uh, make sure you guys tune in on Sunday for our live mock draft. And then we will see you again on Monday. On Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday, baby. Tuesday. Have a great weekend, everybody. We love you so much. Thank you. Thank you.